<laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, this long weekend beard is getting out of control. I need to do something about this. Okay, so here's the deal. You got Valeria on Saturday. You're feeling all proud of yourself, patting yourself on the back. You didn't listen to the pundits. What do they know? Now you have an A, well, your first or an A1 or A3 and A5 Valeria. Now you're crushing it in the arena. But now you're like, mm, still feeling the juice. It's Monday. Oh, well, I got, I got, I got a freebie. It's, you know, everything's reset. I'm getting some new stuff. Oh, heck. Let's just see if we can get ourselves a broke here. And you got him. Now what? Let's take a look. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Matt Capper. This is another video on Watcher of Realms. Today it's broke here. And like the intro said, look, it's time to talk about the other banner champion. This is actually, it's funny, we get so hyped about new banners and the big name banners. The reality is both of these champions are so important. And broke here is, and I'm going to say it, I, I've heard people say other things. They're crazy. Broke here's the best tank in the game. He's the best tank in the game. The only argument you could have is there's two other champions that may vie for that title. And that is Olog, because he's epic. You get him for free. Uh, his initial survivability is amazing. But I think the further you go into the game, uh, this, the base stats of Brokir and his ability to freeze and his ability to have that extra life, essentially, just makes him more viable the further along and the higher damage absorption you need. And uh, Cyrus, because Cyrus is a legendary lord. But because he's a legendary lord, it's going to take you forever unless you're a full-on whale. And if you're a full-on whale, you've already got broke here at A5. So what are you watching this video other than for my beautiful face and talent? Uh, and crazy awful beard. Uh, okay, so let's talk about broke here. Let's start by taking a look at his kit. Uh, and we will talk about... Look, tanks don't, tanks don't have... There's no super secret to tanks. They're... They're not as nuanced. They're not as 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 crazy to build as your standard uh, nuker, for example. A nuker, there's there's lots of different sets for a nuker. There's different ways. There's different thresholds. A tank is just what do I do to make it not die? How do I make it not die? What gear can I put on it to make it not die? That's what you're doing. But let's take a look at his kit here. So the first thing you want to see about him is his talent. It grants physical and magic reduction at ten percent. Two adjacent allies, and we're going to have to check that out because my understanding of adjacency is across. North, south, east, west. However, he could be in a square, which would be the eight tiles around him. We're going to test that out and see whether or not you get that. I don't even know if it shows damage reduction on a, his adjacent champion, so we're going to have to test that out. We have to test this out just so we know. But uh, he's going to give you that reduction. And then when he is in freeze state, and there's several different ways he enters freeze state, but when he is in free state, it grants physical and magic reduction to 30%, which is huge for your allies, which is awesome. Next, let's talk about his base. His base is pretty simple. It's a one square tile, deals damage to one enemy. It's not important. The damage isn't big. It is next to nothing. That's not why you have this champion. You don't have him to deal damage. His A2, which I don't have booked, which shocks me, uh, receiving damage has a 10% chance to inflict freeze on two enemies in range. So that freezes on them. It's a one second, basically, immobility. And then if the hero has freeze himself, which he can get in several different manners, which we'll go through, uh, then the chances increase to 20%. And you can see you can add another 5% to each of those totals with books. His second passive, when receiving fatal damage for the first time, hero gains freeze and becomes immune to all damage for 12 seconds. So once he gains freeze, he increases that damage reduction for his allies. And himself, obviously, is immune to all for 12 seconds. That's 8 base plus 4 for books. His ultimate is the other way he gains freeze, which puts him in a state of freeze and a shield equal to 120% of his max HP, which is why his HP is so important, because he's basing that shield off of max HP, making it more effective in his overall kit than just defense, which is why you build him 
HP first. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and then the freeze effect will disappear with the shield. So after it runs out, which is in... Um, does it actually not say how long his ultimate lasts? Is that weird? Is this the first time I've ever seen this? Is it 10 seconds? Is it 20 seconds? Oh, 10 seconds. Okay. So, uh, so freeze lasts for 10 seconds. The shield draw. It says the freeze effect will disappear with the shield. The shield will disappear with the freeze effect, which lasts 10 seconds. Wow. But it'll also, if for whatever reason he's taken enough damage to get through that shield, I guess his freeze effect would also disappear, I think is what that's trying to say. Uh, sounds good. And then we'll talk about awakenings here, but you see he adds, uh, inflicts freezing up to five enemies around when the shield from the ultimate is gone, which is either when the ultimate ends or when the uh, or when you break through the ultimate. So that's kind of a neat thing. Very big for guild versus guild. Very big in kind of the higher end content where you really have to freeze people in play. You gotta you gotta keep uh, some good crowd control. Very useful. Although the low percentage chance does kind of, which is why I'm surprised I didn't book him into here because that ten percent is not a lot. Fifteen and twenty five is definitely a little bit better. Uh, so there he is. There's his kit. He's just a plug. He's a big old plug. He's got a three base block. His artifact is going to be the Bastion Ring. It is the only answer to which artifact should I put on him. Does he even have an exclusive yet? It doesn't matter. This thing here blocks an extra, so he gets a block of four and increases his physical and magic reduction by 9%. Up to four times, one for each block. So when he's blocking four enemies, he gets, uh, what is that, 9, 18, 27, 36? I don't believe I actually had to stop. I had to actually walk through that in my head. Um, I can't believe I actually did that. Anyway, so he gets that extra reduction for every enemy he's blocking. So he's now he's got uh, he's got adjacent enemies with increased uh, block. He's got himself with the increased uh, or reduction, sorry, damage reduction with that Bastion Ring. It just, it makes sense. This is the, the Bastion Ring should be the Brokir Ring. I don't know why it was, I think it was originally Olog's, wasn't it? But this, that makes no sense. It is obviously, it is 100% Brokir's uh, Bastion Ring. But frankly, all defenders should have a Bastion Ring. I can't, there's no, there. there's the odd case of damage-based defenders or defenders that can do some damage that you can talk about the Flactory. And, of course, you've got the Obelisk, which is really just a Constance. It should be the Constance exclusive. But I can't, like, and maybe for, for the defense, yeah, okay, Goddess's Grace. But, I mean, the rest of these, for every 10 basic attack deals AoE damage. Who cares about AoE damage from a champion that's not a damage dealer? Uh, received healing, I guess, very specifically. But let's not kid ourselves. You all know it by now. It's Bastion Ring. That's why we have three. We're building a four. We're going to build six of these suckers. I'm going to have one for every person I need to put on the field that's going to be a defense in uh, in the uh, in the Codex, Immortal Codexes. So there he goes. For gear, it's even simpler. This is the guy. These guys are simple to build. There is some nuance, but for the most part, especially if you're lit, mid to late game, uh, you're going to be aiming for one thing. As much HP as you can in a guardian set if you can the guardian set on the right hand side gives you the damage taken minus 15 on the left side you're going to want either the immortal set or the life force set which gives you 25 percent hp or the previous would be 25 percent hp plus 10 percent defense uh, i'll show you why he's not in that set there are other sets you can use if you have the pieces for it one of the other sets and i think it's very it's not very often spoken of but in a case where you're stacking defenses only you could conceivably i mean i'm trying to think i'm trying to think in my head how this would work say you're putting someone beside him you can put broke here sideways in an invigoration set maybe and that way you can grant someone the increased attack say you got a silas on a pedestal and you got him right beside face him this way because they'll automatically turn towards wherever the damage is incoming anyway so you could turn them sideways if you want and I guess, but that'd be crazy. Uh, I think Guardian set is still by far, but I'm just trying to think of other sets that you may want to use. Or Broken sets if it just gives you a con considerable amount more uh, HP, then you'd go that way. So number one, by far, all I think all three of these should be HP. There's a few cases where if you just have that much HP, you could argue, let's put him in a speed set to try to increase his rage or a rage set. I wouldn't recommend it. Just more HP. 
better safe than sorry. Defense, if it's just a really good piece or it makes up the Guardian set, defense is the second best with HP substat. But you really just want defense, uh, sorry, HP, and then you want defense substat, base defense, base HP substat, and then attack speed and rage regen just to improve your cycle to your ultimate because his ultimate is so powerful the better you can get to that by having an attacker swing speed a faster attack speed which will then generate more rage and of course just rage percentage which will also generate more rage but those are a small spec compared to just getting as much hp and defense as you can on all three sets and you can see these aren't crazy good this doesn't have this has no base hp and it's got attack speed crit rate boohoo nothing good uh this set is just like we got to put something on them we got a little bit of rage regen and flat hp and some defense terrible but it's a guardian and it's hp and it's fully booked and that or fully ranked up and that's what we need so there is the stats and then of course you took a look take a look at his total stats got 117,000 hp we got 89 33 defense i'd love even more to be honest you see some resistance there his base resistance is 904 uh i don't think there's any is there currently any way we can change that with gear? I don't think there's a gear set that increases magic resistance in my mind. So, and there's the other reason. Look, defense stops physical attacks. Magic resistance stops magical attacks or reduces the effect of. Uh, HP stops both of them, right? So when you're looking at effective HP, because there is no set that can actually manipulate magical resistance inherently, you can see there's no bonus here. Uh, that's why HP is so much stronger because effective health is important, which is your defense with your HP and how that reduces damage incoming. The reality is um, you don't know necessarily or you'll have to deal with both magic and physical damage and therefore HP just does both more effectively than stacking defense and then a big magic boss comes in and completely obliterates you. Uh, we've got attack speed of 203, would love it to be more. No, nah, it's secondary. And of course, 14.5 Rage Regen, love to have more. It's secondary as well. So that's how we built out our broke here. I don't think that there's... Let me know in the comments down below, is there any other way you'd want to build them? I don't think so. As far as where you want to put him, anywhere you need to plug a hole. He is a, he is a hole plugger. <laughs> that sounds awful. Uh, but look, broke here is so important because you need someone that can take on damage stop champions from getting to their goal which is your crystal while you're eliminating them and on top of this this guy can help keep the team around him alive while you're in the process of eliminating uh where would you use him not in guild boss not in samurai you could use him in, in samurai in apocalypse if you just needed someone to take the extra falling he, he could do that so that arguably if you're in the early game that might be a start until you build up different champions that do it more effectively uh, and then arena, same thing. You wouldn't be using them in arena unless you're just so early game and you got broke here, then go ahead until you can replace them with something better. Uh, gear raid two, very strong, but any tank is very strong. I don't think you, you don't need broke here. Literally Olog and Isol can do just as good a job as King Hearts and broke here. I mean, it's, it's not, it's not that crazy of a, of a stage progression that you can't just use any any defensive based champion uh, or sorry any tank to do the job but where we can show what he does very effectively is in the void rift because the void rift is where he is most important now you can see here i, I killed the other guy but here's a here's a perfect example this is where we're going to use broke here and you're going to exhibit why he's so key this is a guy that can take damage and you don't have to heal right away uh fighters not very tanky so when they get hit they can't sustain that damage so here i'm trying to put together a team i can't slow this down no i can't so i've got broke here and i need broke here to stop this incoming and you see he's taking damage but he's he's got so much hp that i can take my time and actually put our dea down first to get her in a position that her ultimate's going to swing when we get that the the chat the uh the enemy there that she's going to be able to do the damage now you see here it started and she takes him out right away and that's because brokir can just stand there now brokir can last a you know 117,000 worth plus 
his passive, which gives him a one-time free state where he's immune to damage. He can block multiple enemies here. You see right now he's blocking three. Not a problem. He's taking the damage from all. If he get, if you give him a healer, it's it's game over. It's 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 let's go, boys. It's such an easy one. And there's your broke here. That's him in every sort of stage. He is. I oh, might as well let this continue. Why not? Uh, look, he's. Anytime you need to use uh, a champion who who needs to put up defense. Like, look here, he's holding four. He can actually hold five in that state because of his awakenings. I forgot to show you those, so we'll go to his awakenings. But uh, it allows the rest of your team to catch up to the enemies coming in because he can hold off four with the, with the Bastion Ring uh, artifact. And then he can hold five when frozen if you have him at awakening one. So during his ultimate, I believe, or during freeze state, which is most likely his ultimate or his pending doom. Uh, keep in mind that you can heal him while he's dying. And we'll show that in a minute as well. But uh, let's go over his awakenings and I'll show him one other area that, that you may need to use him. And he's really best in class in, uh, of course, Immortal Codex. It's already closed, so I can't, I can't do the Soul Cadence one but he is obviously a, a stalwart in that for the same reason he can hold four or five enemies he is survivable as af uh and he's just hard to kill which makes him a no-brainer in the immortal codex for you uh but uh let's sorry let's go to his awakenings here the awakening i don't know if the awakenings are as crazy but they're certainly not bad awakening one i think is the biggest thing because inflicts freeze on up to five enemies around when the shield from the ultimate is gone sorry that's what that is so he gets a shield with his ultimate and when that ultimate when that shield's gone either by it running out or by the enemy breaking through the shield he's gonna freeze and it's a one second freeze but two second freeze sorry two seconds Two seconds is two shots by a fast Silas, which then kills the enemy that is trying to kill you. And remember, this is when his ultimate's gone, so he's already survivable through his whole, whole ultimate. I thought for some reason it was fine. Anyway, that's fine. Then he freezes up to five enemies around. So the four he's blocking, maybe a fifth that's coming in. Pop your ultimate as it's coming in, able to survive. Maybe you're in gear raid one or two, gear dungeon one or two, where you've got back-to-back... Uh, blockers that's helpful so he's able to help there because he can freeze someone that's not directly impacting on him uh very strong awakening to 1200 hp it's good it's not amazing he's taking 10k hits in nightmare uh void rift not but you know hey extra hp is extra hp uh when the hero is inflicted with freeze increases received healing and shield effects by 20 percent. that's a big deal that means uh Anytime he's in freeze, especially his one-time passive that allows him to hit, take fatal damage and freeze instead, you can get him healed up right away with that extra 20%. Awakening 4, all damage reductions, 8%. So already the Bastion Ring is giving you, depending on how many people is blocking him, 36. Now you got another 8. And then Awakening 5, when Iceberg expires, restores his HP. This one is bonkers because it essentially allows you to delay healing him through an entire bar of health, potentially his ultimate, but at worst his free state, and then an another entire bar of health, which hopefully in that time you're able to uh, get enough rage that he now has his ultimate. So you can literally full health bar, 117,000, goes into freeze, has I believe, is it 15 seconds? Of just or 10 seconds of just being able to take damage he's invulnerable to it and then once that's over he's got full health again another 117 or however much hp you have on it awakening five is bonkers so if you did pull an away a5 because you decided to pull on this banner congratulations i didn't i got a five alora no i got a six alora another another champion i got to feed to the bloody oasis i have three fives and i now have four that i've eaten in the last two weeks in two weeks Four champions I've fed to the monster. Anyway, enough about my bitching. The final place I want to show him is the exact same place. He's going to join Valeria. And uh, we'll show it to you here. I still have to work on this. My timings are awful. Maybe we can sweet talk one of the smarter ones than me, like Destin or something, or Fastidious, into doing this for me. Uh, my timings are awful. I have the gear. I have the champions. I don't have the timings. But if you don't have best in class your second best in class is you guessed it 
broke here. And I'll show you that starting setup. Now the problem here is without, especially if he's awakening five, you don't got to worry about it, but he only gets that freeze state once keep in mind, which means uh, at some point he is going to have to, um, you're going to have to swap him with say an Olog. So you're going to need to bring another tank. I have a uh, Minotaur, which I'm guessing I can use. I actually don't know if that's viable, but I hope it is. Maybe Baron. Baron we got to use in this particular example. So you see, he's going to take this damage. And uh, we don't even need to run the rest of this. But uh, let's see. I also want to do one other test after this. So if you don't know, this champion here, once he dies, he's going to put out this noxious cloud that's going to kill. There's no way to get away from this. There's no, his ultimate won't save him, nothing will. But you know what will? That. The freeze effect. And so how you run through this is he gets a free get out of death card free. And then as soon as that thing's gone, we're going to heal him right back up. If he's A5, you don't even have to heal him back up. And you've got that one tile gap here. So it doesn't kill your, your damage dealing champion. Whereas Edith is the best because she pushes them away. This is the second best option because he can just survive it. Uh, and then so that gives you your chance there. That's how you're going to use him. Uh, he, it won't happen a second time. So when the second one comes in, you're going to have to be ready to bring in a second tank to cover him. Like an, I, th I would say Olog would be your best bet if you have to. means you can't bring in uh, a Lord. I'm using Minotaur for a Lord. I might be able to use him this spot. I don't know if he's survivable enough. But after you get rid of that second Noxious guy, you can actually put, you can actually put him here after this guy dies. Um, I don't know what type of gear. Let's see how quickly he dies here. So yeah, you can you can do something like this, I think. I don't have him in the right. He's not in a bastion ring either. So and we're gonna lose there. So but but it did show you that you can you can if you're using, for example, uh Mighty Minotaur, uh Mini Minute Mini Minotaur, Mini Mini Minotaur. Anyway. So you can use him there. Um so that's how I would use Broke here, or that's how you can use Broke here on these stages, right up till ten. If you do not have uh if you don't have another option. If you don't have Edith, in other words, you can... Is it Edith? I feel like I'm using the wrong name. Is it Edith? I was waiting. I have her, so I don't need to use Brokir anymore. But Brokir is absolutely going to go in that. Also, you can use Baron in that top spot. Or I use Baron in that top spot. You can use Brokir in that top spot too, right? Um, so there's some definite options up there. Uh, there. Actually, this is... So when Valeria dies, you saw in the previous video, and then I dropped Baron in her place... And because I'm on stage eight, I'm using Silas. Silas will get replaced when we need to go to a magic damage dealer in nine. I think nine and 10 both have the alternating top row. So you could use broke here when you drop down. Once Valeria dies, you could drop down broke here in that spot as well. I don't see why not Baron or broke here. They both have uh, mechanic survivability mechanics. They're both in a position to get healed. So I don't see why not. Anyway, so there's, there's broke here. Pretty simple. What are your thoughts? Is there any area that you would like to highlight, Brokir, that you feel like I did that I that is a miss here? Uh, oh, I should I should show you a couple things. We're getting ahead of ourselves. First off, uh, I don't even know where we are. Are we in the? Oh, we're in the prepare phase, so we can show my terrible teams. I have not been able to get my teams going, but you can see here, Brokir is in team one. Um, this. Uh, this has been a work in progress, but uh, by the way, it was 398 and it's 403 in the deployment screen, so I'm not too sure. This is a common uh, use of them. This isn't the best team. I'll probably replace this team before long, but this is where you can see Brokir is just blocking. The, this is what he's used for everywhere. Maybe it's down over here, but maybe it's here, but he's just his kit just allows you to plug a hole for as long as possible. So when these monsters are coming through, it gives you a chance for your nukers to do as much damage as possible. She's also slowing and she's putting the poison and the everything. She's got all the control and stuff. And that just allows him to cycle through and do as much damage as humanly possible. Unfortunately, this particular team can get overwhelmed, but that's why we use I to help slow. So everything's about slowing the team down so that Silas can do his job. And the reason why we use her is because it gives Silas an extra tile here so we can actually hit them. It doesn't show the tile, oddly enough. But uh, I would love to use someone else. But unfortunately, right now, she's it. Iovar would be nice if I could put Iovar right there. Then this would be an amazing team. 
unfortunately, I don't have Iovar, so we're just going to have to make deal do with this. But uh, give me Iovar. That sounds like the right idea. So, you know, Brooke here in Guild versus Guild, probably, I'm going to say, the most used champion in Watcher of Realms. There's no stats for that, but I'm, I'm, I would be shocked. If every team in the world, in this overlord world, is there a way we can see who, where's the rankings? That's a ranking reward. Where's the leaderboard here? Immortal Elite. Flashing their credit cards since 1954. Uh, juicy, uh, Fluffy, Dresden. Oh, Dresden's place. I didn't even, I actually did not even know. Uh, do we, can we see? No, he's not going to show. We can't see what it is. I promise you, they're all using Broke here in one of their teams. It, it just, there's very few that aren't because it just makes sense to use Broke here. Uh, but I do want to test one more thing. We can actually go probably to the Void Rift for this. Don't take it. I don't want any of you. I don't want any of your filthy. This might work. So normally I wouldn't use them here, but we're going to. Just because I want to see, does it visually show you his reductions and are his reductions a cross or a square? Let's find out. So when we put him here, we put her here. It does show it. So that's good. So then the question is here. Yeah, so it is a square. It is a square. Now, if I put him here, he's not going to have that reduction. Oh, that's nice. So that's that's beautiful. Uh, so it's a one tile all around, even at the diagonals. Yeah, that's okay. It's so beautiful learning things. You're welcome. <laughs> I was going to put him in sideways. That makes no sense. Here, we'll do that. There you go. So there you go. Uh, and of course you can see on him, he also gives himself that reduction. That's important to note. So everyone's got the reduction in a uh, one tile all around, including diagonals. It's a good to know moment. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. Just have at her. Have at her, you crazy kids. So uh, this is not the normal team I would use, by the way. We'll quit that. So there's the final piece that I wanted to just make sure in this video to highlight. I wasn't 100% sure. It is indeed eight tiles around him, plus he gives himself that bonus, that magic and physical reduction of 10%, 30% when he uses his alt or enters a free state by other means. So with that said, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, I don't think you needed too much help building Broke here, but maybe there was something you pulled out of this. If there is, and you'd like to see more, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and help this channel grow. But as always, it is time for me to go, so I just wanted to leave you off with thank you. I appreciate you. Please be kind, be safe, and we'll see you in the next video.